start with my extreme to my extreme left, R. Jagannathan. He is popularly known as Jaggi. Uh, he has over 42 years of experience in journalism, has been part of quite a few launch teams, Business Today, DNA, and the last one was, not the last one, the second last one was FirstPost.com. Now he's with Swaraja. He has been editor of Financial Express and Indian Management and Business World. Um, and right now you're with, can we safely say a right-wing magazine? Hello. The guy sitting on the extreme left is the one on the right. Probably. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, you're right. Now, Swapan, I think most of you have seen, most of you have seen him on television presenting the BJP's point of view, right? Why are you looking so skeptical at me? You're the one who's presenting it. What is your perception of the BJP's point of view? Sorry? It may also be my point of view. Okay, so it could be, it could be, it may be, perhaps it is uh, Swapan's point of view, but he does uh, function as a spokesperson for the BJP. No, you don't. Mother, one of the cardinal rules of journalism is that facts are sacred. I see. And one of the facts which are not sacred in your case, mm. and the facts which are not sacred in your case is that whatever be my proximity to the BJP, I am still not nominally a member of the BJP. You're not a member of the BJP. Then and therefore you go I cannot on be the spokesperson. Hmm. You're not a spokesperson. So you are a journalist? Uh, a I was a journalist. I was a journalist. Hmm. I was a journalist okay. uh, as long as I had an online job in journalism. Hmm. And that's not since 2003. I am a free floating individual who writes. You are what? I'm a free floating individual uh -huh. who writes to make my living. I do some television as well. And that's what my status is. Okay, so how would you describe your profession? Politician who writes? Yeah, a politician who writes. But you politician? You can call it that. Or writer who wants politics. You're a politician or not? <coughs> it's up to you to define. No, no, I can't decide your identity. The politicians you have to, don't I'm see me. I'm trying to introduce you accurately. The so I'm leaving it to you. So the politicians don't see me as a politician. Hmm. Writers see don't see you as a writer. writer. Spokespersons See? don't see you as a spokesperson. spokesperson. So I don't see you as a man. You said Scarlet Pimpernel. Madhu, you have this time getting into that riddle, breaking into the riddle, just like you figure out who is my adversary. Uh, no, first I'll have to figure you, what you are, and you have to figure out what no, you no, are. Tell you us who you are, wrong and then you tell us. You tell us who's the wrong premise. premise that tell I'm me. a spokesperson. Okay, you're not a spokesperson, yeah. but you are a politician. But politicians don't consider I am, politicians. I am in the political arena. Whether that makes me a politica, politician or not, I think we is have a matter to move on. Otherwise, we we'll spend the whole half hour yeah. discussing so, Swapan's exactly. identity yeah, exactly. and, yeah, thank uh, you very much. and uh, all kinds of other identity crises. So we'll move on to Ashish. Ashish has been a journalist uh, for many years. You were with Telka last, and then you I was in India Today Group last. India Today Group, and then you went to Telka, and then you became you joined Arvind Kejriwal, and we'd like to talk to you about your journey. Pankaj, you were a traditional journalist also and you became an official spokesperson. Absolutely. Yes, with no uh, doubt about it. So let's start with um, you, Then Ashish. journalist again. Yes, now you're a journalist again. So let's start with you, uh, Ashish, because I think you're the only uh, journalist who actually was clearly an obvious journalist, declared journalist, and now you're a declared politician. And you're also studying law now. Is that because of the I'm practicing law? You're practicing law. Yes. Did that happen because of all the legal cases uh, Arvind Kejriwal has been <laughs> facing and apologizing uh, all the, for all the defamation cases? No. Uh, well, uh, that uh, may seem that it became a necessity, but uh, I intended to uh, join the bar for for quite some time now. Actually, I would have joined the bar way back, uh, maybe six, seven years ago. But okay, then let's politics start happened. With what was your motivation? when you became a journalist. Why did you want to do journalism? I, I became a journalist accidentally. Uh, I had just graduated and uh, I just started writing a few articles uh, for the local newspaper in Lucknow. And the very, the, the very first or very second article that I wrote, almost uh, I got slapped with a defamation notice. So from, and that too from a magistrate. <laughs> so 
and uh, I, I could start. That that was a very scary start. And I when I entered the uh, my office in the evening, I saw that the magistrate was sitting there. So I basically felt that today is my last day at work. So after he left, my editor called me in and he said that he was very scared. And he said that are we doing more follow-ups on that story? So I said I am still in the job. And yes, of course you have been still you still have the job. So it just happened and just I started enjoying it. I started writing more and more and. That's how it, I just grew into journalism. So then, what made you drop journalism and go into politics? Uh, well, I remained a journalist for almost 15 years, and I basically did investigative journalism. Even when, as a young reporter, I, in my beats, which I assigned the local beats, as you say, education, health, and crime, uh, I did a lot of investigations at the local level. And uh, I joined politics because it was my personal journey, because I believed that at that point of time, and I still believe that uh, the movement IAC and then what emerged out of IAC uh, could change the system and we could get into the system and fix the system. So the intent was purely that let's get inside the system, maybe we can... So uh, do you find that this motivations for journalism, for journalists who believe that they can ch change the system by exposing what is happening, uh, do you think that the motivations of journalists and politics is ideally in their idealistic state the same? Well, I, I won't uh, make a general comment, but the profession of journalism, I will say that as a journalist, you are always aligned with public interest. Uh, yes. you, uh, you, are, you, are, you, you champion the cause of the uh, underprivileged, uh, the poor, those who have been wronged by the system. And uh, in politics also, again, you work for, for the masses, you work for the people, you work in public interest. Jaggi, please. Tell us about your journey. When did you uh, decide to become a journalist and how did it happen? What well, was your uh, motivation more than anything else? what Because I want to s uh, go through, let our audience know that you have all gone from different kinds of journalism to another kind. Uh, Pankaj, of course, went on to being an official spokesperson. Um, Swapan Weaven, let him explain. So, <laughs> Jaggi, please tell us your motivation more than anything else. Yeah, actually I started my journalism in the midst of the emergency, that is in 1976. I had, my original plan was to just do and try and get a bank job or try and get some kind of uh, job as a software programmer or some such thing. But when the emergency came, I felt that, look, I think uh, there is something stifling voices everywhere and I, I had some... Uh, uh, I felt I could write anyway. So uh, that was the point when I felt that, okay, maybe this is one place, uh, a kind of job where uh, the main thing you've got to do is meet people, write, and try and express the truth and feeling and ideas the way you see it. You know, that's the way I saw it. I said, you can always get a bank job. In fact, I had three bank jobs at that point. Then uh, this was the, the journalism was the lowest paying one. Started with the princely sum of 577. So, but the point was, it was something that I felt I could express from within and it was, it came in at the right time because I think there was a climate of fear at that point. You, I mean, uh, I joined the Financial Express, but I knew what was happening at the Indian Express where uh, there was a banner of revolt being raised, but quietly, you know. So, I think that is the thing uh, that triggered me and said, look, let me not take this higher paying job with the State Bank of India, which posted me in Palghat or somewhere. And uh, instead try and do, of course that actually came later, not at this point. But my original idea was to go into a regular kind of a job. But uh, the time at that point was very interesting. So I felt this is a good time to get into this place where if you come through this trial of fire, where you are being censored, then you can probably be a better thing. That was the original starting point. Of course things... But Jackie, you are one of the few uh, people from a journalist from print who's also been able to embrace the digital uh, format really e expertly. Uh, there was some controversy when you left uh, First Post. And this was about an article that you had penned, written uh, with your byline on Arun Jetli. And that article was then removed to your personal blog because apparently uh, it was being interpreted as some a shareholders uh, vindictiveness towards Arun Jetli. And so you, to clear that mis misunderstanding, um, you did that. And you also mentioned at that time, I read in an interview, that no editor is completely free. Can, yes. 
Yeah. Two things. I mean, to get back to the whole thing. Basically, the problem was the shareholders got blamed for something that they had nothing to do with. Huh? So I obliged them in that but one. But was there something to blame? I don't think so. Huh? But we uh, see, we live in a system where I think governments have their own views on what business is doing and business have their own interests to protect. So that was one reason why I thought for to, to blame somebody for something that they didn't do didn't make sense to me. And it was also a time when I decided that I needed to move on. I, in fact, two or three months later, I did move on. Uh, for the simple reason that, like, if you are going, if whatever you write is going to be perceived as being done at somebody's behest, behest it does not make sense to you as a journalist because I am writing it because I believe in it. I have written on Reliance, I have written on everybody, including when Reliance owned the paper. So, I mean, I think it did not make sense for me to uh, be in a group which had a very strong corporate connect, which then, uh, rightly or wrongly, you will feel constrained. So, I thought it is better to move out of that. That was my logic. You might think. Yeah. But, so, uh, do you, but you went and you joined Swaraja, which is a decidedly strong right-wing magazine. So, in that sense, are you, uh, are your own political views uh, supportive of the right wing? Well, I think uh, I think we should move out of this uh, the French Revolution terminology like right and left. I think uh, uh, the point is some area elements of you may be called right in terms of what was defined as right. Some could be left. I mean, we are all in favor of many things. Uh, we do want. A, uh, uh, I mean, what is left? I mean, we want a strong government, but in limited areas. So is that a right agenda or a left agenda? I don't know. I mean, so I think we should move out of this terminology and say, where do you stand on a specific issue? Do you want, let's say, for example, I mean, if you say right agenda, we want strong national defense. Yes, agreed. Do you want the government to be in all places? No. In that no, case, more than that, I'm asking you, are you comfortable going from a workplace like First Post and then comparing it to Swaraja. There is a huge difference. I mean, yeah, if you there look is at a the huge difference. Things, first so post was a platform. That's what I want to ask. First post was a platform. The definition of left and yeah. right and all that. First post was a platform for multiple points of view. Yes. So, Swaraja is a far don't more... Don't you miss that? No, because uh, I was the same whether I was there or not. Huh? So, as far as I am concerned, what the difference is that here it's a little more ideologically committed paper. Mm. In terms, It doesn't necessarily mean that it's pro-Modi or anti-Modi, but because that's independent of who is in power. But I do believe that you can have ideological framework within which you look at your uh, writing, but it doesn't necessarily have to be something that is uh, uh, about one particular government. Pankaj, you stepped in from being a rather well-known jo journalist uh, straight to becoming a spokesperson. Now, as we've seen in, in our country as well as in America, uh, once you become a spokesperson, you kind of become tainted with that political party's views forever. But you have come back to journalism. So does that mean that now your political views are the same as the party you you were being a spokesman for? See, this is a problem with uh, there are a lot of students here also, they should know. As a spokesperson for the Prime Minister's office, you are not joining a political party. You are joining an office of this country. And when that office ends, your term ends. Okay? And you are working for the government of India. You are not working for party X, Y, Z. So I joined that because you didn't ask me that question, I can tell you. I got into journalism to change the world. Like a lot of people here would. I started with Aruna Safali, moved on with Vinod Mehta, moved on to Arun Puri moved on to Mark Tully, moved on to Pranoy Roy. And I realized at the end of it that everyone, we know this written a book about it. Mr. Editor, how well do you know the Prime Minister? And every editor is writing about the Prime Minister should be doing this, the Prime Minister should be doing that. When someone joins the Prime Minister's office and actually tell the Prime Minister that this is what you should be doing and this is what you should not be doing, the entire journalistic community, it gets up in arms that, oh, this journalist has joined the Prime Minister's office. This is what you've been doing all your lives. The policy to change the policy or to influence the policy of the government of the day. I think the job of the journalist is basically to keep the government, the people in power on their toes. This is what I've learned with all these very noted uh, and venerable 
uh, editors I've worked with. Well, uh, Pankaj, there's a few points here. Yeah. Um, technically, you're right that you're appointed by the government of India, but no government or prime minister will appoint uh, a press spokesperson mm. who is known to be diametrically opposite their political party. Uh, so they will find naturally somebody who can be supportive of their views. Secondly, I don't think it is known that a press person who's appointed as a spokesperson is actually influencing the policy of the prime minister in or the or his government basically you are your job as a spokesperson is to explain their policy yeah. to the rest of the media you are so you are representing their view yeah. to the media and they will uh, if we did have press conferences they would ask you questions um, which would you would be given a chance to explain or defend hmm. now then you become identified with the policy that you are explaining to the media. So you're not seen as somebody who's advising the, the prime minister. Mm -hmm. You're seen as a person who's explaining the mm -hmm. policies that to way, the rest of the world. Absolutely. Now, then your credi credibility becomes mm -hmm. that he is part of that party. Now you are back in journalism yeah. and I congratulate you for that and welcome you back. But do you, you. How, do you, how do you now see what is the reaction you get from Nothing. people? I continue being on the uh, National Committee of CII's media. Yeah, I saw that. Yeah. I continue uh, being on the Fiki's big picture uh, 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 talking head. I continue doing whatever. And as far as credibility is concerned, we have done about 8,000 stories in the last one year. Not a single story has come. See, you learn things when you work with the, uh, an office like that. You know how sacred facts are. There are three directors and two joint secretaries unless they tell you something that the GDP of the country is this much. You won't say it. You won't put it in prime minister's speech. So you know the importance of that. Not like buck buck, you know, which we hear these days. So but that's what I think every, ju every journalist should work in some government office or something. And every government official. I mean, secretaries don't know who these guys are who are on TV in the evening. They don't even know their background. People just ask me the kind of questions when I joined Prime Minister's office. The senior secretary asked me, so which paper you were writing for? I said, you haven't watched TV for last 15 years. <laughs> so they have no idea. So believe you me, I mean, you, if you are in um, uh, getting into journalism, go join some sort of government department for some time. And I, I right now, I mean, that this total disjunct between the prime minister's office and journalists. I've been told, you know, no journalists are, uh, there are no uh, meetings and stuff like that. Ashish just told me that he's been to the prime minister's office when I had, how many, or 30, 40 people? And so we used to do that. We used to talk to people. And that's journalism. Earlier, I was in a uh, newspaper or magazine or uh, uh, television, and I was reporting on everything in the world on one platform. My job as a journalist in Prime Minister's office was that I was reporting only one office to the rest of the world. So let me ask Same. all four of you that the subject of this discussion is sleeping with the adversary because traditionally the way it's supposed to be is that the journalists are supposed to be watchdogs of the government to question the government on policies, to question anything that they perceive has, that has been mismanaged or uh, gone wrong. We are supposed to be the watchdogs. Now, when any one of you is aligned to a particular party or a particular position, um, the credibility of journalism then becomes colored because you're no longer a watchdog. You're more the representative of what you're supposed to be watching. Swapan, please. Well, I think the first thing, it's an important question which you've raised. I think one of the first things of the journalist function is to impart information, accurate information. As any far, information? Accurate information. You see, any information may not be accurate information. But right now we're not, getting, we're not you getting You see, enough. the point is to, as far as is humanly possible, to give accurate information. And on the basis of that, you're completely at liberty to draw certain conclusions, deductions, etc., etc. And I think... Earlier, there was a sharp divide between those who actually ferreted out the information to the best of their ability and those who probably had a more ivory tower approach reflected on those 
and commented on it. That very important distinction, which existed when I at least joined journalism more as the commentator side, not as the ferreting side, has unfortunately disappeared and been obliterated, not least because of the onrush of online, where that distinction is no longer maintained rigorously, or even sometimes the pretense of that has gone. As a result, what we are having is a surfeit of a lot of opinionated writings, and I don't necessarily see opinionated as being a complementary term. A lot of opinionated writing masked with a lot of, what I would say, insolence. You know, exactly the point which Pankaj alluded to, but didn't quite say it in those words, that you have a monopoly of wisdom. And I think that has, in a sense, colored journalism quite profoundly. It's not so much what you believe or which perspective you take. That's important. But whether the information on which you are proceeding is reasonably accurate to the best of your knowledge. And I'm not sure that is always the case. I'm sure sometimes it's, it's preceded by shoddy research, insufficient attention. Well, to there's cherry-picking data no, no, all no, the no, time. No, cherry-picking data. That, that, but I would no, like no, to wait, 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 ask wait. you that so, having uh, been so a journalist, having been a journalist for most of your life, um, and now I see you, I, I, I think I will always be confused of your what you are, Thank whether you. you're a politician or a journalist I'd like that ambiguity to continue. Really? Okay. Theek <laughs> hai. Um, so, in your, <laughs> in, your <laughs> in your ambiguous position, <laughs> can you explain to us then, why should we believe you when you write? Don't. Don't. Then why you write see, if nobody's see, going to believe you? You know, one of the problems, mm -hmm. and I think this is a problem with journalists generally including right? you Incl including i'm saying as a Take tribe mm -hmm. by and large mm -hmm. is that journalists believe that their target audience is other journalists the moment you forget that and say look your target audience is actually a wider world and it's your job to communicate to the wider world then all these problems will not exist Pankaj, you disagree uh, no, it's it's not true what he's saying. Uh, I used to broadcast for the BBC Hindi service from London and there were 60 million people who used to listen to me and they were not journalists, all of them. I used to also broadcast for NDTV and there are millions of people. Who, no, that's not true. After a point, till you are in that uh, typical circuit of Delhi and you are having your single malts with people, then you talk about that. Yeah, I, did a double this, I did that and all that. Yeah. So, uh, that's it. No. Uh, see, we are not getting into the point of this thing. The relations between the government and the journalism and media, they have become toxic. And let's talk about that. Uh, if you want to talk about what's happening, people joining government and the government people joining. Well, journalism. let's talk about ABP News. Uh, yeah, let's talk about this. ABP News. Talking ABP, about toxic. Yeah, ABP News before the last election held an award function where I met the ABP News uh, promoter, owner, who told me very uh, grandly, all the uh, our awards have gone to the BJP states because they are running such good, you know, uh, chief ministers are running such well. I said, fine, okay, fine, very good. Tali bajaya, award diya, aage. For three years after that, the ABP News is totally talking about the government. And in each award function, you have two or three government functionaries who will go there. On the basis of the government function is coming to your event, you will get your sponsorship and your money. And one day that stopped. And that stopped, then you become a rebel. Then you become a champion of the freedom of speech. And what the hell is this? I've known these people from that side of the desk and this side of the desk. I know how this operates. It's toxic. Right now, there's a crisis in the mining industry in the country. And believe you me, there are eight to seven eight to nine media houses who have interest in mining. And it's going on everywhere. 
I know this because these people will come to you and say, sab ye karwa dije, sab wo karwa dije. This is all a charade. A media is become so self-serving because the people who are running the media, they are using the media and newspapers. I'm very sorry to say people who want to get into media, open your eyes. The ownerships of the media are the main thing. And that's why, you know, this new... Ownerships are a myth. Ownership, no, that's gone wrong because the media outlets are being used as a leverage on the government of the day. Bukhimantri ko bulana hai, haan, phone kar do, aja hainge. Because you are the largest circulated uh, newspaper in the world. Well, Bukhimantri will come. Bukhimantri has been refusing a lot of these. Yeah, uh, no, no, but you are not leveraging it properly. I, I haven't called him. <laughs> I haven't called him. <laughs> so no, that, I'm talking so about why. large media houses. Yeah. We are not inviting politicians. Yeah. No, no, Mukhyamantri is come. For I've seen managing editors sitting outside Mukhyamantri's office for two days. And it pained my heart as a journalist. It really killed me. Because these are people I worked with. These are the people who are like my really icons in journalism. And when I, you do frankly, that, Pankaj, you know, forget I, it. I don't know what you're talking about. Because, because I'm, I'm talking uh, about that how the media has become subservient to the government of the day. Uh... The because thing is, I, 4, Pankaj, crore has been spent in last four years Pankaj, on media. Yes. The point is that if that is like saying that everything is bad because we know that there are journalists and editors who stand up to the government and will not sit outside anybody's office to get an audience. They're not waiting for handouts for their visits to their conclaves or summits. There are enough media houses who, have, who function in an as upright a way as is possible in a country like ours or any other country for that matter. So I think... Name me two. In fa- I, can, I can challenge you. Name me two and I'll give you instances. Indian Express. Indian Express. Okay. Be careful. Yeah, yeah. Indian Express invited the head of the RSS in 2013 or something because they were going to print both Panchjanya and organizer in their printing press. Okay, and Indian Express, you not work for Indian Express ever, you have, and you, you also have. Indian Express, <laughs> yeah, Indian, sorry, Indian Express since its inception, okay. since the emergency and everywhere has always sided against a certain kind of politics in this country and it continues to do that. I mean, from Ramna... No, you're talking about dishonesty. You're talking about I'm people talking about who are catering to I have to reported power. on Indian Express running a campaign against Ambani in the 80s, which was funded by the Wadiyas. The pictures I've reported Be on... Be careful, Pankaj. I'm, no, no, I'm, I'm, is, I'm telling you. This is defamatory. This is, this is all reported. This is all no, reported. reported doesn't make it right. It is defamatory, so you have yes, to be careful. I've, I've written about it. I've interviewed Mr. Arun Shuri, who was running that campaign uh, uh, those days. I've written about it. And Arun it. Shuri told yes, you that Nasli Wadia was paying him? No, we found out who was paying it. We got pictures from Bombay. There's okay, we've run out of time. Yeah. And I really want so to give I want opportunity. To tell you, I really you can't want to give, give me two names. You gave me one name. I gave you Indian Express, which you said was corrupted. I mean, this discussion will, is being sidelined, to, and yeah, I and I think we need to thing. we need to do justice to the rest of the the panelists. Ashish, we have run out of time. Please, if you can give us a few words which would uh, give you your version, so that the young people here come leave with some kind of idea of what it means to go from an idealistic journalist to an idealistic politician. Let's get it onto a positive mode. This yes. is uh, a bit oh, okay. Um, so. I mean, first of all, uh, one cannot say that there Don't is no... Don't be too long so that... Yeah, I'm not being too long. I'm just saying... And Swapan hasn't spoken at all after his lengthy <laughs> introduction or non-introduction. Let's give him some more time. Bolye. We, I mean, one cannot say that, uh, you know, there is no conflict between being a journalist and being uh, aligned with the government or being in the prime minister's office or being in the chief minister's office or taking a Raj Sabha nomination from a ruling party or... Uh, being the editor of a right-wing uh, uh, magazine which is openly, uh, you know, propagating a certain ideology. It may be of the ruling party or it may be of the principal opposition party. There is a clear conflict. As a journalist, you don't have an ide- ideology and you don't take sides. That's the first cardinal rule of journalism. Now, the moment you take a Raj Sabha nomination or you join a political party or you get into the prime minister's that office... That is sleeping with the that adversary. Is, that is 
quitting journalism mm-hmm. you can be a columnist you can be an opinion uh, piece writer but you cannot say that i am a journalist i mean that's i think there is a clear swapan so, this is so an opening for you to, in your eloquent yeah, I mean, way rebut it i would tend to agree with you know which is why how can you agree with that no well, i'll tell you because i He's was very clear saying what you're doing is totally no, but, uh, I, just, I can I'm just, just let me come i one you can say that i am a sympathizer of bjp and i am a right wing thinker and i write for uh, i represent bjp's views or write columns we support bjp or which favor bjp you can say that but you cannot say that i am a journalist well whether you call yourself a journalist or not is there is always that problem and i do oh it not there's always that you have that problem swapan yeah. we are clear i'm i have been very list. clear from the day from day one i used to write a column right from the 1990s which was called right angle huh. which was very evocative right. in it actually I made my that. position hmm. very very clear hmm. that this is what i believed in and this was the perspective i was going to give i was not in reporting so therefore i could say i am a commentator i could opinion writer uh, writer call it whatever it is i'm hesitant sometimes to say that i am a journalist in so far as i on the street report but Take the care. point is that even that ambiguity is gone ever since i've ceased to have any online functions i don't have any online functions since 2003 so i am an independent person believe it with with certain very committed views i have and i make no apologies for that people accept my columns for the basis of what they say yeah not because they are neutral i am not a neutral person sometimes i make no pretense were, of the neutral once you were no the when point, you criticize the bjp on their foreign policy which yeah, yeah, i, I still criticize the bjp yeah. for a lot, a lot so of silly things sometimes yeah so yeah for a lot of silly things they do so that doesn't necessarily but my sympathies are firmly with the right so what are the advantages of being a rajya sabha member the advantages of being a rajya sabha member is as pankaj would tell you apart from being a, having a slightly generous accommodation is uh, is that for how you long see, for how it's, long it's, don't it's get so, too comfortable God, it's for don't get too stuff. comfortable no, and one of the greatest advantages is that you see a system from inside that you realize that not every politician is a fool that there are fools in the system but there are also extremely clever people so will we get a there book are also six people years? who you also understand the element of play acting which goes on in politics you understand the compulsions which make people do what they do and they are not irrational compulsion then you also realize what is the quantum of venality in politics and that it's not always all venal and it gives you a far greater sense of what the system is Good. and so and will we my, get a to, book? To, to that extent i believe that this privileged access does help my writing hmm. and of course if you write i mean if you know and you write then you'll never know again so you've got to be rather circumspect with what you write and leave it to that autobiography which you might leave. right in your old age but are I'm we sure going to get you would agree with that are you going to get a book out of, are we going to get a book out of this 6 years no these 6 years you i don't believe in kiss and tell i have a lot of things Then stop i don't kissing. believe just tell i don't it. believe no i will not tell i i have been privy to a lot of very confidential information which have been given to me on the basis of trust So why did and they I give it to you? And I will not break that trust. Why did they give it to you? Because they give it to me because it also helps me understand. Ah, okay. It also so, helps enough, me understand. Fair enough. Fair enough. Absolutely. Jaggi, you have the last word. Basically, I think we should not uh, um, oscillate between two extremes: that journalists are absolutely um, neutral, or that they are absolutely uh, aligned. I think the reality is that we all have our sense of where we are coming from, and to the extent. you are who you are and you have gone through your own life experiences and your own uh, uh, sense of identity your reporting or writing will be colored to some extent by that if you want the truth i think there is a simple way to do it anybody who wants the truth should read somebody who is uh, say has a certain point of view you should also read another guy who has a different point of view that's the way you get truth so yeah. truth emerges it's important because we are finding yeah. that people only want to read what they agree with that's right and that's get upset right. with anything they don't agree with uh-huh. as lies that's right so i think this so is i think it's up to the individual really i think see it's up to the individual 
to decide that if I really want the truth, if I merely want to hear what I want to hear, then you will read the same uh, yeah, right, yeah. again. Mm. But if you want the truth, there is no shortage of sources mm. from which you can find the truth. And that is the reality that we need to understand. So that truth does not exist in any one point of view. It is there, it's a collective. Uh, we are all the blind men with the elephant. And just because I've caught hold of the trunk and you caught hold of the tail, we both think we are right. But the truth is, we, neither of us is fully right, but neither of us is fully wrong. Okay. So thank you very much, uh, Jaggi, Jaggi right, Swara, uh, Swapan right, Ashish left, and Pankaj, the s <laughs> kind of truth teller to be questioned. Yeah. <laughs> thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you.